Douthat with Gwinnett Woodworkers. Uh, our normal videos are formed uh, or recorded Saturday mornings in front of a live audience at a regular uh, club meetings. Oftentimes the video and the audio is not conducive to uh, YouTube, they're, they're aimed more toward the uh, live audience. So we're, we're doing some recording here in Rob's shop uh, with a bit more controlled environment to try to give better audio and video. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do in this segment is make, some, make a spinning top. And I have some examples here that I've done before. Uh, see that, that it really does work. And this, this one, I've, I've got some chatter work on it and then, then did some coloring. And some other ones I've just, just strictly did coloring on, haven't done any chatter work on. So, so this is what we're going to be doing is show you how to make a simple little top, very quick and easy to make. Something that's uh, ideal for a beginner. And you, you may have seen a, uh, a top demonstration before, and oftentimes what you'll see is somebody will start out with a piece of stock that large and, and form the top either in this orientation or in this orientation here, and all this wood is cut away to, to make that top. Well, the, the uh, Gwinnett Woodworkers Club is, a, is a, a general woodworking organization, and we have special interest groups for scroll sawing, special interest groups for turners, and then we have just have general woodworkers. Well, the, the scroll sawers like to refer to the turners as wood wasters, and making a top this size out of that piece of wood, I would have to agree that that is wasting quite a bit of wood. So I'm going to show you a technique that I, I can't claim as my own technique. I've just, just hopefully improved it a bit, but... Okay, so the, uh, our, our founder, Ron Brown, he came up with this technique uh, to not waste so much wood where we, you could start off with a, a, a limb or something like this or even a square block of wood. But if you're making a number of these, uh, like for the uh, wood, woodworking show, I'll, I'll sit there all day long for the duration of the woodworking, work, woodworking show making uh, tops for the kids. So I'd, you want to don't put, put any more effort into preparing the stock than necessary. So instead of taking a larger piece of wood and cutting it up into to, uh, to square stock, I'll just take a limb. And what I do is I'll, I've got a bandsaw sled that I'll, I'll just slice off pieces about that thick. Um, and then I'll drill a hole in the center. And then for the, and what we're going to come up with is, is this, this arrangement here. Uh, you'll form a dowel to, to put in the hole for the, uh, for the spinning uh, act or the, the, the axis on the top. Now to do that, I could, you, you, you go down to the hardware store and buy a dowel. Oftentimes those dowels aren't round when you get them and they wouldn't fit snugly in that uh, half inch hole. So what I do is I make my own dowel. Now I could mount that between centers and turn it down, but that's more time and, uh, expended into doing that. And what I found was this, it's a, a Veritas dowel and tenon cutter available from Lee Valley. They come in 3 8 uh, 7 16 and half inch sizes. Uh, what I'm using here is a half inch size, and it's just like a big pencil sharpener. You know, instead of coming down to a point, it's, it's going to spit out a half inch uh, diameter dowel coming out that end. So I'll get just good, starting out with this uh, stick of wood here. They say, the directions say you should be about an eighth of an inch over the size here. So I got a five eighths inch, roughly square piece of stock. I'm just going to stick it in there as far as it'll go to uh, to provide support. So I got the lay set down on on the slowest speed range. We're going in forward. And then running, you know, about, about 300 RPMs. Let me just slow it down a little bit more than that. Here's about 200. Okay, so now we need to, to get all the way to the side. What we'll do is we'll take it out of the chuck and reverse it, and then run the lathe in reverse to come back off the other direction and finish it off. Again, reversing the direction of travel. I've got my chuck spun on there to give it a pretty tight. 
If, if you have a chuck that has the capability of putting a set screw in there to lock it, that'd be preferable. But this particular chuck doesn't have that feature. And there's our half inch dowel. So we can take that and, and glue it into our uh, into the hole. Extra snug, but you can press it in there and glue it in. Just use regular, you know, your tight bond glue and glue it in. And I, I cut that down before I do that. I cut it down to about three inches in length. Now I'm going to use the same same uh, pin jaws here to uh, mount the the, the uh, top. Uh, oftentimes when you see somebody turning a top, oh thanks, boss. Don't forget to put it back and forward. Turning a top here with with a piece of stock like that, you'll you'll often see them turning it turning the top in this orientation here, doing the handle first and then coming down and parting it off with the point. Well, the, the reason for doing it, one of the reasons for doing that is that you've got the mass out here closer to your stalk and it's not going to flop around where if you're turning it like this, you, you're forming the body down here and then when you get down to the handle, you've got a very, uh, very little piece of wood there and it has a, would have a tendency to flop around. So what I do is I, I turn it in this orientation, but I always provide support from the tail stalk until the very last moment and then remove it and part it off. And that's the way I'm going to show you how I do it. So we're going to mount it in here and I want to at the, at the same depth as what I'm going to part off and when you, when you do it, the handle you, you don't want the handle to be excessively long because you'll get too much weight up the top and it'll, it'll throw the center off, uh, throw the spinning capability off the top. So you want to keep the handle just just a little bit longer or just long enough to be able to get a good grip on it. So we're going to push it in into the long enough to get support but yet uh, long, have enough extended out to where I can get the, get the handle parted off. Okay, I'm going to use a, a Sorby uh, Steb Center. It's the half inch, uh, half inch diameter here that's going to be you know, made up with that, uh, that half inch diameter shaft very, very nicely. Okay, now I've taken it down to slow speed range for, turn, for uh, cutting the, uh, the dowel, so I need to take it back up to the faster, highest speed range. This lathe has a, has a three, three, uh, three step belt system to give you different speed ranges and I'm moving up to the, higher, the highest speed range. Okay, before you turn the lathe on, you want to get your tool rest positioned. Since this is not r running around, I'm going to spin around and make sure it's not going to hit anything. Okay, I'm going to use a spindle roughing gouge. Uh, to get to make it round. And when it's when it's still not round, I'm, all, I'm only going to run it maybe about a thousand RPMs while it's still running out around like that. And I'm coming in you know, at sort of an angle, so I'm getting a shearing securing cut. And I got the bevels to, to provide a bit of bevel control. And you can, you can hear it that it's now round. Okay, now 
I want to start out with a diameter of about two inches for my body. The, 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 the format of a dot, one like this is about two inches there. So there's my caliper set on two inches. And I've still got to take down a little bit more. I've got, I've got about two little bit, two and three eighths, three sixteenths. So I just need to take a little bit more off. <clears throat> and I still had a little bit of a bark area show, showing there. Oh, well, you didn't want to get rid of all that bark too. And we can turn the speed up now a little bit. You get a little bit cleaner cut if you run it. I'm going to run it at about 1800 RPMs for the remainder. And about another eighth of an inch. There we go, two inches. Okay. So I'm going to use a uh, a half inch spindle gouge to uh, do my basic shaping. It's got about a 45 degree bevel on there with, this, with some swept back wings. So I'm going to come in with, the, with the, the tip of the tool vertical, make the entry, and once I get an entry and then I can start rotating around, when I get bevel support, I can rotate around and, and, and give me a bevel supporting cut. Okay, now if you want to, if the, the thickness, that's way too thick, you'd have way, way too much mass to try to turn. You need to, when you, when you spin the top, you, need, you have to be able to get it up to speed with just the flip, flip of your fingers. And if you've got too much mass there, you just can't, don't have the torque with your fingers to get, that, get it spinning. So I'm going to come down, I'm just going to take a, quite a bit of wood away from the top here where it didn't really need to be that thick. Move the tool rest in a little bit farther. And I say I'm just going to take away uh, a quite a bit of wood here just to uh, so, that, so that the thickness of my body is about you no know, quarter inch, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. And you see, I'm 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 starting at the gap, starting ga the the uh, with the point running completely vertical until I get, get a, a bit of support there that I can support the bevel. And then I'm rotating the gouge around and I'm, I'm really doing sort of a peeling cut. I uh, skin the surface up there a little bit, clean that off. And now I'm, just, I'm using the, 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 side of the, the side of the gouge there, more sort of like a skew type of cut. And I just want to just get rid of those sharp edges so you don't cut your fingers. Okay. Now we'll come in and we'll just start, start forming the handle, get rid of some of this material in here. Okay, I go to switch to a smaller gouge. Me, uh, I got it dished in there. Let me take a little bit more off of there. I always like to put just a little bit of a detail there on, on the base of the handle where the where the where the handle joins the. Uh, the body. And we'll have a nice crisp, 
crisp detail there. So I'm just gonna get that. Okay, now at this point, if you were going to do any texturing uh, or uh, any other decoration on it, this would be the time when you want to do that. And I, don't, I didn't have a texturing tool here today, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use uh, uh, colored pencils or colored pens. Now, I had been using uh, Sharpie, but there you get a, a various colors of Sharpie in a package, and it's about $10. I was down at Northern Tool the other day and I saw these on their table was two dollars for that selection of colors. Which I thought was a pretty good deal. So we well, we're going for colors. How about a uh, how about a Halloween colors? And again I need to put the lathe down to a slow speed, to the slowest slow speed for putting the, the rings on there. So I'm going to go back down to the slowest speed range. And, uh, oh, you're on this side, Bob. Well, I'm going to run it at, at a very slow RPM. There's, there's about 270. I'm just going to touch it. And put some spirals on it. Okay, and I put just a little detail here on this one. Now the colors have bl bled here a little bit. You'll see when I stop it that they this I think this is uh, uh, drawing a blank and on what kind of wood it is, but it's the, the colors will bleed a little bit. And I'm thinking if you put maybe a, a seal coat of shellac or something on it, that the colors wouldn't bleed. And that, that's really not too bad. That's pretty crisp there. And then you can also do the same thing to the bottom side, even though you would, wouldn't see it when the top is spinning. Okay, that, that's it with the decorations. See, I'll, I'll put, but when I get the handle down, the spinning, I'll put, we'll put a couple of colors on there, but we'll need to get the, get the handle down, trimmed down a little bit farther for that. And we'll do that next. Now I need to go back up to the, to the faster speed range. And then again, we'll go up about 1800 RPMs. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, get the point cleaned off while I've still got enough material here. I'm going to go, get, go ahead and get the point form down here. You know, I switched to a different, uh, different spindle gouge. The one I was using before had about a 45 degree uh, angle on the bevel. This is, this is down to about a 30 degree to give me a, a little bit more clearance to get into a tighter area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to get down and get some of this material down here. Now, I can't completely cut this off. This, this Sorby Life Center, the point is spring-loaded. So when you, when you get down to where it it's almost coming apart, it starts compressing up. So I'm just going to get away as much material here as I can with the, with the life center still there. Okay, now we'll take that away. And then very delicately move, remove that last little bit there. down at the end, just sort of coax it and convince it that it needs to come off. And then, now you don't want the point exceptionally sharp because they'll just break off. But you want a nice defined point. And that's, that's one of the reasons that I do it this way around because I figure that that point is the business part of the top. That's what makes it work. So I want to have full access to making that point nice and clean where if it was flipped around the other way, the top of the handle would be nice and clean, but I'd, I'd have trouble getting a nice clean point. So we got that, but now I want to still want to have support out there. 
when I do the work on the other end. So I'm going to switch to a, a different live center. And we'll try to use this one here. This is, this is a, a live center that comes, typically comes with a, a mini lathe. And I've got the point knocked out of it. And the way you do that, the, the point is, uh, you know, I didn't have them in here. But the point is, there's a taper in there and the point is in there. You just put it down on a block of wood with a hole in it and support it and take a pin punch and you can knock that point out. Now when you first get it, it, it might be in there pretty tight, but it does come out. So I'm just going to use the, the, the cone to provide some support on the, on the, on the bottom of the, uh, from the tail stock end, just to give me a little bit of support so it doesn't, fl start, doesn't flop around. Go down to a narrower tool rest. Okay, now the, the spinning part, uh, the, the part that you hold to spin it, uh, in American Wood Turner, the uh, magazine for American Wood Turner had an issue on tops uh, maybe about a year ago. And I think they said you want the, the, sh dial, the good diameter for that shaft is about 3 sixteenths of an inch. It just gives you the right amount of torque where if you get it, if you, if you have it too large, you just can't get the rotational spin to spin good. And if you have it too small, you just can't get the torque to, to get it up to speed. So we're going to go to about 3 sixteenths of an inch up here on, on the handle. We're going to make the end of the handle about right there. I'm just using the side that that's the part of the wing there on the on the on the spindle gouge just to give me a, a skew like shearing cut. So the, the cutting edge is about 45 degree angle to the wood. So that looks like about 3 sixteenths there. No, actually it's a quarter an inch. So we need to take down a little bit more. Now I've made some tops with, with the, uh, the handle making you know, sort of recessed in here and come out to more of a little bulbous type thing. To, but what I found is that little bulb just sort of digs into your finger and makes it hard to sing. So I just like to have a straight shaft to give you, just gives you a nice even feel all the way down the shaft. And we're still a little bit more. So I'm just going to touch it. There, there's a, some little rings, and I'm just going to hit that with some sandpaper. Starting out with some 120. Slow it down just slightly. And then some uh, 180. And then we'll put some final decoration on that. Go back with our orange and, orange and black. And we'll just put a... Uh, Just opposite what we got up here. And when you're doing this for the kids, you, you, you hold your colors out there and you let them pick the colors that they want on their top. Even some of the bigger kids like that too.
Okay, so we're going to part it off. We're going to leave the handle about, you know, we'll part about right, right about there. Now, sometimes I was just reading, I think it was Richard Raffin's got a book on toy making. And he made a top in there, and he says he always puts a point on the handle. That way, when you spin the top, you can spin it with the handle down. So I've been doing that now, putting just a little bit of a point up there on, on the tip of the handle, too, instead of making it round. Then if you can, I have trouble hitting the plate when I get it spinning that way. But that's how you make a top. Very, very simple, nice project for, for a beginner. And the, the, the jaws I'm using here, I skipped over it. You know, that you could, these are the pin jaws. You can also use a thing called a collet. Just, just like the, the collet in your router, it's, it have, you can get the collets in different sizes. This one has a half inch hole in it. It's got a number two Morse taper on there. It's threaded here. I can put the draw bar in and it doesn't fit this. Well, I guess it may fit this, but it, it, draw, it just goes right into the Morse taper. If you don't have a chuck, you can use the collet and, 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 and hold the piece in the collet like that and turn it with the collet. And the, this, this, this collet I got at uh, this place called The Little Machine Shop. But since I got this, uh, Peachtree Woodworking now has a range of collets. Uh, they're labeled as Brown's Best. But you can get this. I think, I think it's about $20, I think, for the, for the collet and the draw bar that you cut down to, to, for your particular lathe. Well, thank you for watching.